Voting for the mayor of Johannesburg has been postponed to next week. This to determine the actual number of votes made up by the 50% plus one majority required. Councillors decided or rather demanded to know the number and the presiding officer initially went out to consult on the issue but then came back to say that the matter required proper legal determination. The, ele the election comes after the resignation of Herman Mashaba whose last day in office was on Wednesday. Joining us now to discuss this is Dada Morema, who is Regional Secretary, Greater Johannesburg for the African National Congress, in here with me in the studio. And joining us on the line from the Democratic Alliance is Council Speaker of City of Johannesburg, Vasco de Gama. A very good evening to you both, and thank you very much for speaking to us. Oh, good evening. Mr. de Gama? Good evening, and good evening to your listeners. Uh, perhaps let me start with you, Mr. De Gama. So, um, is there concurrence that the initial majority was 136 votes, but that number changed with the death of Councillor David Mutubid? Well, the, the actual number in 2016 was, um, and obviously if we do the calculations on 270 councillors in the city, uh, divided between PR and ward councillors, it would be 136. It would be 136. So I'm curious, where does the confusion arise now? The confusion arises from the Structures Act itself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't determine a, a, a 50 plus 1. Um, um, and obviously our own council rules, the explanation around what a majority is, is basically 50 plus 1. And that's where the confusion is. Political parties was arguing on the floor based on these facts. And I then asked for an adjournment for five minutes. So to so your understanding, you say based on the stats, what are the stats to your understanding? To my understanding, it is 50 plus 1. Mr. Moremo, what is your point of view of this? Well, uh, the speaker is not being uh, 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 honest and truthful in this case. This is a simple thing. You have 270 councillors who sit in council. Your quorum is constituted by 136. Simple majority of council, therefore it's 136. Because a simple majority is half plus one, which is 50 plus one. So we don't know what the confusion was because in 2016, when they elected the, 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 the mayor then, Hemen Mashaba, he was elected on the same rules. And uh, it was simple majority uh, 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 of the councillors who were in council on that particular day, as long as you have ensured that the quorum of 136 is there. So do you feel that the goalposts are now being moved? Yes, that's what we feel, and we feel that the speaker has been incompetent. He had a month to clarify anything that he would have been confused about. He was Semen Mashaba presented his intention to resign in October the 27th, mm. and this was uh, November the 27th, yesterday, which was his last day, the 26th, sorry, uh, 27th actually, yes. And uh, he had ample time to consult mm. and ensure that the rules are put in place. And when notice for this meeting was given, in the notice there was a clear indication that there will be elections today of a new mayor. So the speaker, Takama, can come here and suggest that he was confused. Mm. If he was confused, he should have allowed the councillors in council to assist him to understand what this thing means. So he can't Is come it not fair comment what Mr. Moran was saying, though, Mr. Takama? Because for me, if you say it, you, you need to postpone so that you can get proper legal determination. Uh, I was asking myself the question, shouldn't this have been dealt with prior and shouldn't it have been uh, obvious from uh, precedent? I think uh, uh, that I was sitting in the, in, the, uh, in the audience, obviously, and you would have listened that the arguments based the, from councillors was based exactly on that. Based on exactly uh, what? So asked, that we're clear. The, the, the question was asked whether a, a two-thirds, uh, I mean a, a 50 plus one would, would, would suffice. 
And I was busy explaining them exactly what Dara is talking about. In other words, we had preparations long before the time. I explained the structures as it is, with no inclusion of any new words. But obviously the confusion is between our own rules and the uh, Structures Act in itself. If you read the Structures Act itself, it confuses the whole matter. And that's why councillors were confused. And by me it confuses it in what way? Team. And I please, I, I, I do ask for you to indulge us, including the viewers, because you are speaking to people who were not present, people who are not familiar with the rules. So where does the confusion lie, uh, arise in that legislation? The, the, the confusion arises whether, when you've got three candidates, right? You've, three candidates that have applied to become mayor. And you've got to go on a runoff in the sense that you've got three candidates and based on, on, on the facts on the ground, the EOF had, has 30 uh, councillors in the city. The DA has 103, all right? The coalition on the other side would have, would have had 121 plus the, the, the coalition partners there would have then made up the 169, except the councillor that passed away. And if you had gone into an election, it would have meant that you, have got, you would have gone on to a simple majority out of what the Structures Act explains. But for us to, 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 to receive the, 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 the final results would have meant, in fact, that we, uh, um, uh, uh, you wouldn't have had it run off because it would have caused more confusion within the council. And as, as councillors explained, if this is not properly done, we will have a blood flow. Mm. You, you, you'll, you'll forgive me if uh, my understanding appears a little limited. Are you suggesting that it's because of the number of candidates that has uh, thrown you into a tailspin because then that would suggest a runoff? Or is it because the runoff itself would challenge the understanding of a simple majority? Exactly. Exactly which? I've asked two questions. I, what, what I'm saying is that the runoff in itself would have asked questions on the Structures Act itself, how it explains itself and what the differences are that would not have, 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 have given a, a proper result. Is it unprecedented words, that you have three candidates? A, a, a candidate receiving a hundred votes would have won the elections, we do, which, which does not bring you to the 136 required. No. Mr. No. Moramo? No, you see, Takama is trying to the issue here is you have three candidates and that's that the stress systems act says in that case you'll then have two in simple terms you'll have two runs yes the first run is for all three and you eliminate one once you have eliminated one you have now two Hmm. This is what I'm asking. Is it unprecedented that you've had more than two candidates running? No, it's a, it's a, it's a normal practice. So why, where, where does the and confusion the, the, the Systems Act explains it clearly to say once you finish, you eliminate, then you have a second run, and the two that remains, so your interpretation run off, is that and whoever received the simplest majority becomes the mayor. So your interpretation is that they really shouldn't be any confusion. It's there in the Systems Act and therefore nothing should, yes. nothing should change. And, 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 and Dagama is surrounded by a team of lawyers in the city who are competent to interpret those laws. They had a month to interpret them properly so that there's no confusion. The confusion in council was actually caused by him. And in fact, it was not a confusion. He was playing a delaying tactic so that we don't proceed. End? To the fact that they knew or understood that the ANC is going to win today. And as a result of that, they found a way. In fact, you should have been there and see how you closed the meeting. It was like uh, meeting a society. Uh, he just decided that I'm postponing well, this meeting. This meeting will sit on the 4th of December. I think I'm that going I, to that ask. You really, no, 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 no. Really not Takama, my man. 
You then say, I'm closing this meeting, I'm going to ask for a legal opinion. You had a month to prepare and clarify everything. In fact, the IEC was there. There's one councillor who even stood up and said, can the IEC explain the rules? Because they would understand electoral rules so better than anyone. So are you suggesting anyone. that Mr. Tagama shut it down? Yes. Did you, Mr. Tagama? In fact, we believe he was biased, and as a speaker, is not supposed to have, uh, 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 he's supposed to be impartial as the speaker. Believe me, I was as fair as I could. If ah. it was not for, for the ANC councillors disrupting the meeting oh. and obviously raising questions that they Was it just well, only the ANC councillors, though? Why going to be explained to them? Was it only the uh, ANC councillors, though? Because there seemed to be irritation amongst other councillors as well. Uh, believe me, there was irritation from all sides. Yes, so why do you and, just say only and, the ANC? But, but they started in, intervening, interjecting, standing up and speaking when they were not supposed to speak. And obviously that does not uh, uh, have a conducive meeting in the sense that you, you, you interrupt other, uh, other speakers at the same time. And believe me, I've explained the Structures Act as is with no words added to it. Which would have given the Did you refuse the IEC right an opportunity to give their interpretation, their understanding of the Act? Believe me that the IEC cannot speak in council. That's the first thing. Okay. We had a consultation with the legal advisors, and, and the legal advisors' advice was there is confusion rather go for an independent legal opinion believe me if i hate the, to belabor the, the legal point advisors of the city mm. of the city gave the legal op opinion that i read out i hate to belabor and the point mr dagama but when did this confusion arise or the consultation with uh, the legal advisors did you not foresee this problem i did foresee this problem so why only have those consultations today well, if, if councillors stuck to, to what is in the Structures Act, the explanation is there. All of them can read it. It's quite clear. And, and that is the legal advice that was given by the city's legal advisors. But obviously, because they don't believe in them, they started arguing. And therefore, I decided then to, at that point, to ask for an independent legal advice so that everybody is clear. Okay. That legal advice will be given to all councillors so that they fully understand on paper what, what instead of us having an argument in council about something that all councillors should be of favor. What do you... How do you respond to Mr. Moremo saying that this was a ploy um, on the DA's behalf because you are fearful of the fact that uh, their candidate, uh, Mr. Jeff uh, Makubo, is likely to win, that it's pretty much a fait accompli? Some say that the DA doesn't have the numbers, that the odds are stacked up against you. That's not true. Uh, for this process to go... Uh, uh, and be recognized by not only the public out there, but also all councillors. It needed to be dealt with in a free and fair way. And, and, and therefore, if, if you already question the Structures Act hmm. by ANC councillors that stood up first questioning it, what else was I, uh, I expected? So you, you deny the charge? I deny the charge that this is trumped up, that this is a, a, a coalition arrangement that ensured that the, the, the council collapses or otherwise postponed to, to the next meeting. It's to clarify, number one, the Structures Act, including our own rules in council. Mr. Moraba, you seem to want to respond to that. Uh, look, uh, it's, it's, uh, the government must just accept that uh, the first thing you should do is to ask province through Cocta, that he should recuse himself to preside over the meeting on, on the On what basis? He says exactly that on the basis wanted. that he has proved to have been biased. Even if in today, if you listen to, to the interview and how the speaker speaks about his cancer, clearly he says councillors of the ANC as if they're not part of council. He treats them 
uh, differently because they do not belong to his I party. Didn't treat any and we expect the speaker to be impartial and treat them I didn't treat any everyone fairly. And you should have seen what happened you in council. Know that you are, in you fact, Dagama must and, also and, accept and, that he got instructions. He got instructions from other parties that this meeting should not proceed. In fact, we also have it on good authority that they also have an intention to disrupt the meeting on the 4th, not to allow right. it to proceed. So, uh, this is your viewpoint of um, what has motivated uh, the Speaker's behaviour. Do you have the legal basis to take this matter to court? Look, our head office has said that they are looking at the possibilities of taking the matter to court so that at least the court can help him clarify what he says was a confusion. But if it's a and matter of legal we're asking, interpretation... We're asking the court to give us a clear interpretation that will force Dagama to then proceed... And with you are meeting. confident that that will be in your favour? Yes, because the Systems Act is clear on what should have happened. Mm. And he chose not to you follow You see, it. when the, when, when, when the does not it. get their way, anywhere in council, they seem to use their provincial power to enforce that. No, no, no. no. This is just no, another no, no. case. Is the provincial is power or the legal route, Mr. De Gama? Because he is saying that their lawyers will go to court to force an interpretation that will help matters move forward. Is that using their provincial muscle or is it going looking to the law to clarify the act? What is what is what is so different from this speaker's office getting a legal uh, a independent mind. legal opinion and circulating that to make and to ensure that councillors all understand how the process should happen. All right, all things being what is equal. So all things being equal, come the 4th of the 5th, by the way, there seems to be a lack of clarity on whether or not this is to resume the voting on the 4th or the 5th. Is it the 4th or the 5th of December? Will, the, the, the council will continue on the 4th and the 5th. Okay. All things being equal, that the matter is resolved, how confident is the DA that it will have the necessary numbers, given the fact that you don't seem to enjoy the support of the EFF anymore? Do you think you'll have the numbers? I'm, I'm not sure of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely sure that Dada is also not sure of whether the ANC will don't have speak the numbers. On my um, remember that we are in a coalition agreement with, uh, you're not sure that you have the parties. numbers or you're not sure that the EFF won't support you? Well, it, 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 it comes to both of them. If the EFF don't support us, we won't have the numbers. Okay. So, Mr. Moramo, what about the ANC's uh, chances, uh, the very same EFF, whom I must uh, point out to our viewers that we did invite them. They, at some point, spoke, uh, spoke of uh, Mr. Makubo's problematic past, as they put it. No, well, it's, it's their view. You see, they can't come and try to dictate to the ANC. The ANC has its own internal processes, which it has handled through its own uh, integrity commission, and uh, we, we were satisfied that he should proceed. And once there's a report, a, a consolidated report, the PEC will act on it, and the Secretary General will act mm. on that report. Uh, we, we, we move from a notion that says you innocent till proven guilty, and we have taken it upon ourselves as the ANC to, to, to take him to the Integrity Commission and deal with the issues that are alleged mm. to have happened whilst he was the MMC for Finance, and a director in his uh, mm. uh, company. And, and I want to talk about, the, uh, some say that background puts him in good stead because he has uh, intimate knowledge of the workings uh, of uh, uh, the city. But I would like to understand from a party perspective, what would be your main priorities? The DA has put it as uh, lawlessness, infrastructure, um, housing, unemployment, corruption as uh, top priorities. What would they be for yourselves? Look, uh, where we are now, we have taken a view that the first thing that we would have to do is to stabilize the financial positions of the city to ensure that, one, we increase on the collection rate, which has gone down, uh, and of course they will deny it. Uh, we'll ensure that that's the first thing that we would want to do. 
The second aspect that we are committed to doing is to ensure that we drive service delivery, especially where it is not happening. And where is it? It's in Ivory Park, it's in Soweto, it's in this slot. That's where you do not see a service delivery. We have seen an increase of dumping sites and so on and so on. So that will be our second focus. Yes, of course, jointly with the province, we'll focus on a program to deal with crime. Crime has been a problem in Johannesburg or in Gauteng or South Africa. Uh, so we'll focus on it and how we will do it, we'll bring back a program that we had had just before we went out of power, where, which we called JMPD uh, 10 plus, which we we're saying in every ward will ensure that okay. at least there's 10 home bodies of the police and inspectors from environment and other departments right. to assist uh, us allow to me to give uh, bylaws. Allow me to give Mr. Degama a quick and final word. You seem to be chuckling at that. Uh, perhaps you could um, indicate yes, why, I, Mr. Degama. I think, I think that the ANC for the past uh, 15 to 20 years have, have failed in providing the services to the citizens of Johannesburg. Uh, it's an opportuni op op opportunity for them to actually... Uh, this credit, uh, the DA-led coalition in the city, and, 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 and therefore everybody knows uh, uh, Makubu's record within the city. Everybody knows that 30 million was paid to him uh, by uh, his dealings within the city. Do the citizens out there want the ANC to continue plundering the city as they did, like all other state-owned entities, ESCOM, uh, 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 city power in the city of Johannesburg, Joburg Water, and all these entities that have fallen down to the corrupt activities of the ANC. I don't think so. And therefore, Dada must think carefully in, 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 in talking about reappointing Makuru to run the city. All right. I think those are issues that they really have to carefully think about. The citizens out there are awake. They know about all the corrupt, corrupt activities that, that is being exposed daily on TV. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. That there is uh, Vasco de Gama. He is the speaker of uh, the city of Johannesburg in studio with me. Thank you very much. Dada Muramo is uh, the ANC's regional secretary, Greater Johannesburg.